You're tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! for tuning in to the second episode of season three of the Mindy Project, the second episode ever that we have done here at After Buzz TV. And all I know is that we love Taylor Swift and we feel yeah. like this song kind of captures Mindy. Mindy, we feel like you either love Taylor or you hate her. We hope you love her, but we think this would be perfect for this season. So what did you guys think of this episode? I liked it. I think that um, I feel like we're kind of diving right into her relationship with Danny. I feel like things are moving pretty quickly. Um, she's already meeting the family, already going to brunch with the mom. I feel like I would be really intimidated if I were in that situation. Definitely. I think she's kind of forcing her way into the whole meeting the mom thing, which yeah. I personally wouldn't do. I hate meeting the whole parents situation. So I would have probably waited a little bit longer, but I think Mindy feels like he's the one and she's ready to go full force. Yeah, yeah, she really does. So when we start the episode, you know, we get right into her and Danny's relationship, which is basically what the entire episode is about. Um, and then we meet his mother, which is the title of the episode. Um, Annette Castellano is my nemesis, which I think is pretty hilarious. So we meet Danny's mom, and she thinks that Mindy is um, his cleaning lady. <laughs> Which is so disrespectful. But for, I didn't get that until he said it. I was like, what does she mean at her rate? Does she think she's a stripper? Like, I, I didn't really know what was happening there, but I thought that was super disrespectful of her to just assume that. But I think it just kind of plays up her character even more. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I watched another show that that situation happened where the person thought, they were a cleaning lady or whatever. I'm trying to think which show. Well, there's it? a movie yeah. actually that it reminded me of. It's called Fool's Rush, and it's like a oh, 90s yeah, yeah, yeah. movie with Matthew Perry and yeah. Salma Hayek. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. he introduces her to his mother, that's the movie. Yeah. Yes, and she gets pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yes, I was that, like, what? <laughs> that scene, and yep. it's one of the best, most underrated romantic comedies. I pretty much think of our generation. So mm -hmm. if Mindy Kaling, that is what you were thinking when you were writing this episode, kudos to you. Mm -hmm. If not, it's a fabulous coincidence. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think of Danny's mom? I think it's a pretty, t it's, it's funny because it's pretty typical. He's a mama's boy the kind of relationship that they have. And they definitely played that up, that she kind of is very protective over him. And she's willing to, you know, be as rude as she needs to be to make that clear. She was a little intense for me. I don't think I've ever met a mother that was that intense. Yeah. But, I mean, it gives it that little drama that we needed because if they were just, like, all If they got along, then we wouldn't watch yeah. it. Yeah. It would be yeah. like, okay, can, great. Can so when's the wedding? Can you, you know? imagine if you were her and you and that's the you're the mom of the boy, the boy you're dating? That would be so terrifying. <laughs> I don't even know what I would do in that situation. Yeah, it's really intense. And mm -hmm. she also is a very intense woman in real life. She's a fabulous actress, Rhea Perlman, but... I mean, which was amazing casting for this episode. Um, but she was the epitome of the crazy mother. Yeah. What's that movie with um, Jennifer Lopez and Jane Fonda? Um, um, something about wedding, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The, it reminded me of Jane Fonda's character in that movie. I can't even think of the name my, of it. Mm. Uh, oh, God. I'll remember it in a couple minutes. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway. Yeah. Moving like, on. similar to that. <laughs> Also, what I so loved, basically, Mindy watched a whole bunch of movies yeah. while she was writing this. Yeah, and pulled Made in Manhattan, Made in Earth. No, nope, not damn that. It. Sorry, uh, not <laughs> Made in Manhattan. Not that one. It was um, the one that was not as good as that, but that was a great one. Okay, um, I'm crazy until I think of it. I know. <laughs> okay, if you guys out there know, let us know. Make a comment. Tell we us will think about it. I will remember it. I guarantee you by the end of this. Yeah. Um, Monster in law. Monster in law. Yeah. 
Thank yes. you. Thank you. I was like, what is I would have thought about uh, that. Yeah. Or, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now that's out of the way. Now, <laughs> let's address uh, what's not addressed too much in this episode, but was so sad in the past episode was um, Peter and yeah. his girlfriend. And um, Jeremy wasn't even in this episode. She wasn't either. Right. No, she wasn't either, which I, I didn't expect her to be, but wasn't touched upon that much. Yeah. But he's depressed. Yeah. He's it's depressed. Show, it's kind of show, because the first episode, because it was at the... The episode is only like twenty something, twenty two minutes, twenty three minutes long or whatever. So we're seeing the kind of last episode. We found out that she cheated on him, and now we're finding out like how he's coping with it. And I assume next episode we'll see some sort of confrontation. Right. Well, they kind of you know talk about it a little bit here when uh, (laughs) when Morgan tries to sell his dogs or give away his dogs because Tamara is allergic. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Um, let's talk about that for a moment. I think that was like an interesting side story because the the majority of the episode, which we will get back to about Danny and Mindy, talked about their relationship and his mother. But they wanted to throw in a little bit of like a side story, which I very much appreciate because I do feel like in the first episode of the season, we got to see a lot of everybody. Yeah. So we're brought back to that here, um, which I thought was kind of cute. What did you yeah. guys think about the storyline? Um, I liked the whole the whole storyline with Morgan and Tamara, but it was interesting to see like how Peter thought about it because last episode we saw him wanting to buy all this expensive jewelry, all this uh, the tiara or whatever, mm-hmm. and like making a lot of sacrifices for um, the girl who is cheating on him. Right. So he's trying to protect Morgan from making the same mistake, making all these sacrifices, changing his life completely for a girl who's probably lying about. Something and I thought serious. she was lying too. You did. I was like, I did too. I'm like, I'm allergic to dogs too, but not really. So yeah. I was like, yeah, she's lying. I would say the same thing if I didn't like dogs. Yeah, but <laughs> that you're allergic. I, yeah, I was, I'm t- totally gonna say that. But uh, <laughs> when even when he was putting the dog on her, I was like, she's faking. It was just acting. She was like, yeah, but then she knocked over the croissants. Yeah, That's I was like, wait, far. okay, she's going a little far. I'm not going to let the croissants. Maybe she's really allergic. And then yeah. when he did the EpiPen thing, and I was like, oh, oh she, that's an, he's an really amazing learning. nurse. Morgan, by the way, I mean, what an amazing nurse. I personally have a, they mentioned something about a latex allergy, like that's not a real thing. It is a real thing. I have it. And I have an EpiPen I've never had to use, but I always pictured my knight in shining armor running right. up yeah. with an EpiPen. So that, is that what you have to use just in case you just, I've never had, I stabbed myself once on accident. Different story, different podcast. But um, <laughs> yeah, never technically have I had to use it. No. But that's what you would use. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's My a, best friend's also. I know. It's a very, we should have our own show. Anyways, <laughs> he was pretty adorable. Him and Tamara. Are pretty cute. Even that, that kind of came out of nowhere. Because last season, he was kind of like, she was with her ex-boyfriend, and she kind of liked him. It was kind of, did they like officially get together last season? Yeah, was there remember. a moment where they were like, let's do this? Or is yeah. it just kind of this season going into there it? There was. I think they were fooling around for a while. They were definitely fooling around, right. but I felt like she got back with her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. So I don't know what happened between then and and now. But yeah. I like them together. Yeah. Yeah, I like them too. I just don't think he should have to change his whole life and get rid of his 40 dogs, you know, if that's what he loves. But, like, so who, I'm glad that he's not. Who has, why would he have 40 well, dogs? Maybe he's just passionate about Yeah, dogs. that story's a little <laughs> much. But I, I don't know how you can have 40 dogs in Manhattan. But, but the, the fact that he had to get rid of his dogs is just stupid, anyways, because he lives at home with his mom. So, like, why are you even going to visit him at his house? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, just have him come to your house. Let him keep his dogs. Get on medication. That should have been the plan A. <laughs> already. Yeah, uh, like, already. Wh- why was plan A making him sell his dogs? Yeah. That's a little bit much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the dog will be good for Peter to kind of give him a little distraction yes, from everything. so excited about that. I was just mm-hmm. looking at that. I was like, he gives Peter a dog. He totally needs a dog. Mm-hmm. And he needs some loving, I think. But as you said, I think that Lauren, which is the character's name, Hopefully, we'll be coming back at some point. Um, I don't, but we didn't really get that attached to her. Yeah, we met her briefly. She was only there for a couple of episodes. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I have, I'm kind of indifferent about her, other than the fact that I don't what want I know her of to her, be. I don't like. At this point, I don't want her to get back with Peter because I feel I like Wanted she's more on. into the other guy than yeah. Peter. I do just want Peter to be happy though. I really yeah. want him to find a love interest. Yeah. Let's very briefly talk about iTunes. 
Okay. We love iTunes, and we need you guys to rate us, comment. It's really helpful, and anything on YouTube as well. Um, but please just rate us on iTunes. Tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, anything you have to contribute to the conversation. If you guys wish that you were here and you want to tell us your theories, please contribute. So as far as that is concerned, let's move a little bit back to the end of the episode um, where Mindy and Danny and his mom, the story uh, picks up again. It was really funny, I thought. It was um, it was pretty amazing. So she when go- they're in her bed when they're in his bedroom. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, actually, like starting back though, even to the hotel room. Yeah. Oh, oh she's a maid. Fight. Yeah. Yeah. So she's a maid in a motel or a hotel, whatever you want to call it. And uh, Mindy, who is a genius at uh, becoming friends with the mother, because what she did during that luncheon was brilliant with mm-hmm. the T-shirts, and she was amazing. So yeah. she goes to meet the mother in the motel room. But we find out in that motel room that the mom doesn't like all of his ex-girlfriends because they always agreed with what with everything she said. So it was good that at the end of it, at the end of that brunch, that she kind of stood up for herself, that she defended Danny in that situation because then she wasn't always agreeing. And mm-hmm. so I think I think the mom kind of likes that fight, yeah, like yeah. likes that battle. And when someone is just so okay, yeah, you're so yeah. right, let's do that. That's annoying, and you can tell that they're kind of a pushover. So I think that she respects Mindy even more because she did stand up to her. Yeah. What do you think, Mom? I definitely agree. That 100. Yeah. percent I think that's. I think she was trying to give her a hard time, but at the end of the day, or actually in the back of her mind, she was like, okay, I like this girl. Yeah. She's giving me a little fight, but I'm going to give her a little bit more of a hard time, but eventually I'm going to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not really sure how much she liked her at the beginning, because quite frankly, she seemed racist. Um, Annette did. Yeah. I think she wanted to see, I don't know if she knew whether or not it was his girlfriend or whatever, but I think when she's giving someone that hard of a time, they want to, she wants to see if they can take it, if she's strong, if mm-hmm. she, how tough of a skin she has. It, I don't think it was racist because she's a foreigner as well. So that to be racist to another foreigner is just stupid. Yeah. Well, but she I said think some... it was more so she was stereotypical, assuming that she's a cleaning lady because she's, you know. Yeah, but also all of Danny's past girlfriends, which she mentioned, were like little white wafy things. Mm-hmm. Um, and she wasn't expecting that out of Danny's new relationship. Right. So I think that she was just at least shocked. Yeah. Um, but she just seemed, you know, a bit at first like a like an older woman that has a very strong opinion and thinks in her own ways. Yeah. The mm-hmm. most interesting thing to me about the mom was that um, so last episode Danny kind of had a, a a moment where he was talking about how he was a stripper because he a was paying for med school, but then also he was able to pay off his mom's mortgage, all this stuff. So obviously, it was kind of there was a struggle there within the family. And now that he's paying her bills and kind of supporting her one hundred percent, that um, it's kind of surprising to me that she isn't doesn't show much gratitude towards him for all of that. And but at the same time, she like worships the ground that her other son walks on yes. when he doesn't really do anything at all. So I feel like I see. That that a lot in my life, like not personally with my family, but just uh, you know times where some kids are given more slack while others. Yeah. Are, the, the ones, and I feel like this is a theme in movies a lot too, where that we see you know certain people who have a good head on their shoulders are given more of a hard time. I guess because she knows that he can take it. Yep. That's Whereas exactly the other what one it is. needs more n- nurturing. Yeah, it's you know she looks at the the younger son as a weaker version mm-hmm. of you know Danny and. She doesn't think that she can talk to him the way she talks to Danny because he isn't as successful and as educated or whatever. He might be insecure about that. So she kind of sugarcoats things for him. And that's still the baby. Yeah. So, yeah. And at that, but at the end of the day, everyone wants to feel appreciated and everyone wants to feel that gratitude. So I'm glad that they did have, Mindy had that conversation with her in the motel room about how she needs to show a little appreciation for Danny. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, he really did appreciate that when she said, made that comment about the stove at the end. So, Yeah, I mean... Mindy, Mindy just getting involved is really helping him out here. It is. I mean, I am a daughter, and uh, I have a lot of siblings, and sometimes I, like, you know, like, people are hard on you, especially when you're the oldest, or... I mean, she praised his brother for getting her a teddy bear from Hudson News. I loved how specific that was, Mm because everyone mm -hmm. sees it in the airport, and he's like, I picked it up, but I stole the snow globe. Mm -hmm. So sweet of him. (laughs) Um, So anyways, real quickly, guys, let's, uh, 
let's go into predictions for next week. Okay. I feel like there's going to be some type of issue between them because it's just, it's. I feel like it's been all lovey-dovey and now we need some type of new conflict between them. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, my prediction is that we'll see more of Peter. I'm really hoping he doesn't get back with Lauren. Um, I think that'll be more part of the storyline for next week. Um, but with Danny and Mindy, yeah, there's got to be another conflict because we mm-hmm. ended on a good note. And hopefully we'll see a little another little uh, strip tease from him yes. in the near future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I agree. I got excited towards the end of the episode because it looked like he was going to do it again. I'm sorry. That doesn't excite me. <laughs> not, <laughs> not my time. Not no, but I'm It like, just excites me because it makes me laugh. I mean... I love seeing you, her expressions excite me. Yeah, no, it's him. hilarious how yeah. that. Yeah. It's but just I, funny. I was in here last week, so I did want to mention when that whole thing started and she like reached over to grab her glasses. Wasn't he I laughed it off yeah. Her yeah. so hard. Yeah, I laughed so hard at that part. Okay, well, guys, <laughs> what are your predictions? Did you do them? Mm, I I'm just about to tell oh, you okay, what okay. my predictions are. Um, my prediction is that uh, next week. Danny and Mindy are probably going to fight, but I think that uh, there's going to be a little bit less of an emphasis on them and more on the other characters. Like Peter and Jeremy will probably be back. But I think um, as a general prediction, Danny and Mindy are going to have a really tumultuous relationship that's very loving and fun. But specifically, I uh, I just think that they are just going to fight a lot yeah. about stupid things, don't you think? Yeah, well, I was reading online today that, um, because I watch New Girl as well, I'm sure just most of um, the listeners I've never heard do. of that show. You haven't? I'm kidding. Well, it's, <laughs> like, I feel like these two shows just kind of go together. But, yeah. Um, but how there was one article that said Mindy Project didn't make the same mistake that New Girl made because when Jess and um, Nick got together, it was kind of like, yay, that's happened, and then... After that, it just show kind of, just kind of. I didn't understand why they split up. Still, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, no after show for that, but, but it's because they got to, they finally got together. There was so much build up for them getting together, and then it happened, and then they needed something else to happen. Yeah. So it just kind of like went off from there. But this one, like, because we have conflicts, and like it, when the moment they got together, they already had a conflict about whether or not they can trust each other and the whole stripper thing, like the first episode. So that kept it interesting. So I'm hoping that because now that they're together, that's not a problem like it, it kind of was for New Girl. My fear for this show is that I'm falling in love with them together. Mm-hmm. So if they break up, I'm going to be really heartbroken. So yeah. I, ugh, I, I want, I'm like supportive of it. I'm like, but if they go too far, then I'm going to be hurt. I'm being selfish. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, they these are two very difficult people, very difficult characters. Um, and I'm excited to see what happens. But also, I think the third the third season was the start of like a new chapter of the Mindy Project. Because this was her single. Yeah. And I really hope that at least this entire season has her tied down a bit. Yeah. Which is kind of like the opposite of what the show started as. Well, that's okay. I I like her in a relationship, and Mm -hmm. I like that she's finally able to have something that's real. And we saw that, we heard her talk a little bit about that in the first episode of the season about how she just wanted to make sure it's real, and that's why she always talked about it. And I also think that's why she's kind of jumping into going to meet the family and trying to get on the good side with the mom so fast because if that happens, then that's another sign that this is real, this is happening, and she's finally like in a stable relationship. Yeah, so it looks like it's going down a good road, I Mm -hmm. think. We'll see. Um, Where can we find you guys on social media? You want to go first? You go first. Okay, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sterling Cates. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Imani Fresh. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at SamD43. And don't forget to follow After Buzz at After Buzz TV on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks, guys. We hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.